Der Klett-Kotter-Blog ist immer noch auf der Frankfurter Buchmesse. Neben mir sitzt jetzt Steve Sam Sandberg aus Schweden. Already in your novel The Fatiger I Touch, um, The Opera of Lies or the German edition Die Elenden von Lodge. Mm. We have spoken about this book in 200, 2011. Yeah. 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 Link in the article to this video. Yeah. Um, published in 2011 by Klett Cotter. You had described, yes, even recreated the events after your visit of the Archives. Mm. Um, your choice was to present the results of your research in a novel rather than in a historical book. This mm. was your main idea? Because I'm a novelist, I'm a fiction writer, I'm not an historian, so that would be my obvious first choice, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for, me, for me, I'm primarily a novelist and I'm using a material, um, historical material or documentary material, but I don't use it in order to, 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 to write a scholarly mm -hmm. um, work to be read by only by scholars, but the important thing for me is to to make the history a uh, living reality for people uh, who are not scholars but who are interested in maybe in what actually happened during during for example the the Nazi site or the NS, uh, the, the war the second world war um, mm. we just published um, De Utwalda mm. when in Sweden when was it actually? it was published uh, uh, exactly more or less exactly uh, no one year ago one year yeah. ago yeah. Um, This um, book has been published now by Klett Cotter, Die Erwählten. I, I want also to say it was translated by Gisela Kosubek. Yeah, it's a very and good translator. Yes. And a very good translation. Mm. Often I forgot, I forget to, uh, to, to, forget to, to, to translate. Name, to translate. The translator is the one who does the yes. real hard job. Yes. Mm. Begrüßen Sie also. Mm. Um, this book is also based on the archives of um, Steinhof, mm. which was a mental hospital in Vienna with mm. a group of pavilions with the name Spielground, where the, the Spielground was located. Spielgrund. Why did you Spielground? Mm. Why did you choose this place, also this location? I think the, the I, I didn't choose the place. The place chose me. Um, I was living uh, in Vienna, staying for a while in Vienna when I was finishing the previous book, the Elena von Lodge, and uh, I got very much. Um, uh, I got acquainted with this place during my stay in Vienna and it's not only a mental hospital it's used for that purpose even today but it's it's almost a world in itself mm -hmm. at when the time when it was founded in 1907 uh, it was actually the largest psychiatric hospital in the entire Europe mm -hmm. so it's a, a, a huge uh, mm, uh, hospital area Uh, and it was also at that time considered to be quite progressive because they treated pa patients in a, in a very uh, um, educated and, and for the time being, for the time, a very um, sensible way. Uh, so, uh, but uh, when the Nazis took over, the, 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 the psychiatric wards were, the, the patients were taken out of the psychiatric wards. Was the one in which year? It was in, uh, in, 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 in the late, late 30s and, and early 40s, after the Anschluss mm -hmm. of Austria. Um, and, and the pavilions of this huge hospital complex was used as to take in children from, from different orphanages and, 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 and hospitals around Vienna in order to be able to, uh, um, to, um, to deal with them in a, in a proper, what the Nazis thought was a proper manner. Mm -hmm. And some of the children were re-educated, like my, they tried to re-educate them to make them proper use, so mm -hmm. to speak, people who could work for the system. Uh, or if that was not possible, it was used uh, as a euthanasia clinic that were young children actually were, were, were killed mm -hmm. and those were often kids with, with uh, severe um, mental or physical uh, handicaps. Mm -hmm. So the, the answer from the Nazis was just to, to, to get rid of these people. In the 1940s there was a sort of school reform, a reform school was developed for this social deprived children. 
What is uh, was it? It was not really a reform, isn't it so? No, that's what I, I said. It was uh, from from different corners of Vienna. Uh, children who were just socially misplaced had problems at home. In, in, with my protagonist, my main character, Ad Adrian Ziegler, in my book, is is just having the misfortune of having an alcoholic as a father, and and his mother is away all the time because she has to work f to support the family, and the social. Um, Uh, uh, people from the from from the um, authorities, so to speak, they they pick him up because he is just walking around on the streets. So he's put here. He has does nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with him physically or mentally. He's a bright kid, but he's this is this is this is the place where you where, where during that time you you put the, the the children, and the purpose was was to 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 educate them in an almost military fashion. They would they had to stand in line. They had to do certain things in a mechanical way they had to 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 be taught to obey every order to 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 really be be, be servants of the of the of the system so to speak and 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 of course my main character tries to escape like any normal kid would yes. and he tries one time and he's severely punished for it he does it the second time and he's even more severely punished and now they really put him in the yes. in the place where he's he mm -hmm. can be killed and then tries it the third time and he actually actually <laughs> manages to survive and i would really take the opportunity to point out that this is not uh, only a story about death and 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 and, and brutal terror and and uh, and so on which it's of course also was the the main purpose of, of this clinic but it's also basically a story of a young kids a street who is street smart as you would say in yes. nowadays yes. Uh, who is bereaved of everything his 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 parents his his family his everything but he tries and he still manages to get out and and of course something will be forever broken in him but he actually survives with a with a with with honor so to speak in the end and um, and this this was when i heard about this these kind of stories that are really survival stories i got very much um, taken by by them and i wanted to to put them in a book and 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 and, and write the stories in in my way in this novel in order for 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 the reader to really try to understand how, how not only how brutal the system is but how even in these places in these corners of hell so to speak you will find also honesty and 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 a, a, a vast amount of courage let's speak about the main characters of your book if you have invented um, you created them also to give an answer to the question how all this could be happen could happen No, I and uh, no, I I, I I think that this is the question that the reader have to answer himself. Uh, I'm a writer. I tell stories. I I try to identify with with people uh, 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 who are in my book fictional characters, but I hope to write, be able to write them in such a way that they will be believable and understandable as as, as human characters like you and me. Um, Uh, the way those people are dealing with circumstances that are just thrown in their way, right? Uh, they d as an everyday reality. You have to survive the brutality in some way. You have to escape the system in some way. How do you do it? How do you do it? And I, if you tell this um, stories, these stories, in such a way that Uh, that is true to history and true to the events and also true to how people psychologically behave in in very extreme situation i think that the reader is intelligent enough to to be able to draw his own conclusions and make his own judgment about what is right and wrong and what is evil and what is not evil i don't think that the writer is uh, a lecturer Uh, who is going to point fingers and say, "Now you understand this, and now you can." After reading my book, you will understand this or that. I mean, I would, I, the, the important thing for me with, with all my writing is open a world for the for the reader, and, and and ask the reader to step in and live the reality that the the book is 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 telling, and draw his own conclusions. Let's say something about uh, Adrian Ziegler. Is um, you have already 
said mm. it. He's the main person mm. and has he a, a model in real life, a, a biography in real life? Or is he, is, he, uh, is he also an invented person or has he a, a biography which you found mm. in the archives? Well, to be honest, if, if you could tell me the difference between real life and unreal life, I would be very grateful. You have one. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. no I, I mean, Adrian Ziegler uh, is, is a fictional character. Well, he's, he's fictional in real life. Yes, but what is real life? Uh, because when I wrote the book, I had a huge material. I had maybe 700, 800 real life stories in front of me. And what I wanted to, to, to write about was a character that actually was able to survive. Mm -hmm. Actually came out of this place and, and the point of the story was not only to tell a story about a place but also how do you, how do you manage to be an adult when your childhood is sto sto stolen from you. So there were seven or six different characters that actually survived. Some of them have been writing about their experiences, telling them about it to historians mm -hmm. and from these six or seven characters uh, I made my characters but also with my own imagination yes. so you cannot say in my case that this person in real yes. life is that person in the book because then everything will be wrong but there is some things that happened to one of the characters it was um, uh, who's, who, who, a survivor who sadly died this earlier this year. His name was Friedrich Savrel, uh, and he, he 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 was very accommodating to me. He told me uh, very much about his own life. Um, but what happened to him, in many ways, was unique because um, he actually managed to escape and survive. And uh, but his life was not very happy. But what happened to him that's quite extraordinary is that 30 war years after the war ended, he actually um, met one more time the same doctor that actually tried to uh, kill him in the in, in the actual clinic. Um, and this this is a really really very strange thing that that everybody who hears this story will say that it's um, completely unbelievable that mm -hmm. something like this happened. But it happened to him. And uh, he was sitting uh, like you and I do and, and this doctor was supposed to give a um, uh, um, uh, write about the mental state of him. Just the same thing he had done before. And uh, he was quite surprised that he recognized uh, that they recognized each other. And um, what he did was actually to say to him that he, I will, if you don't talk about this, we will, we will, I will see to it that you will get uh, off the hook, so to speak. You will not be severely punished for all your crimes that you have committed. But what he actually did was to write a very negative. Um, Gutachten, uh, uh, you say in, in German. Um, you speak German. Well, th I speak that word. Yeah, <laughs> you know, this that word, and 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 he, uh, which had the consequence that 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 he was once again severely, severely punished. So this is this is the irony of history. But because when you start forgetting, which people almost did immediately after the war, it was possible for the perpetrators yes. to sneak the way back in. And uh, once again, practice their old, their old um, uh, in their in their old professions and so on. And this this story is so outrageous. I thought that it it had to be told. It had to be find a place in in my in my novel. And Sister Kachenka, she was uh, well. There's the difficulty that it's um, uh, there was a, a sister, uh, a nurse uh, with that name who had that function in that clinic, but I don't know very much about her apart from uh, what was later um, uh, came, came up when she was questioned by, by the police and by the court mm -hmm. because there was a process against yeah. her and she gave witness and then she was also being um, tried and punished. And from these records you can, you can have um, the contours of, of a, what you would say, um, a very typical, I think, person 
uh, at that time filling the role of a perpetrator. And that is not your typical evil being. I mean, Sister Kachenka was not, she was never a Nazi. Quite the opposite. Her, her background was, 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 was uh, with the social democratic movement that was really very strong. And because of that, during the, 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 the Nazi zeit, the, the time with the National Socialists, she was, uh, she was forbidden to, to get work because of her political background. Mm -hmm. So the only place where she could find work was in, paradoxically in this yeah. clinic, right? So she didn't have any other choice and she was the perfect nurse. She went from, from the, the school with the, the highest grades. She was always uh, loyal, always obedient, always uh, doing the right thing, always... But in the end she could not help the, the children. No, but, but, but she, she thought herself that she was not in a position to, to, help, to help them. And, and I think that as a reader, I, will, I think when you read the book, you will, you will, I think, and many people have told me, it's, it's, many identify with the character Adrian, but even more people, strangely enough, identify with the sister Kachenka. And she is the, she's the wrong person to identify with. And I think that for me was, was, was a success because if to get into, to understand a victim is never difficult because all of us are victims, more or less, for something. But to really get inside the, the skin of, uh, of one of the people who actually perpetrated the worst crimes in history, it's much more difficult. And when people find that this is, this is something they really catch on to. I, I think I, I did a pretty good job with the book. Gisela Kosobeck hat das Buch von Zemberg übersetzt unter dem Titel Erwählten bei Klettkotter erschienen. Who should read this book? I think everybody should read it. Um, and not be uh, um, afraid of the subject uh, because it can feel maybe like it's a subject that I don't want to to get in close contact with, but I think you should read it because it, it not only because it tells you something about how how evil and good works in all of us, but it also tells a story about ordinary people trying to cope with a reality that nobody would have chosen for themselves, but was the actual reality at the time. And it, it, it poses questions to all of us. What would you have done in that, in that case? How would you have acted? And I think it's important that you put that kind of questions to yourself, sometimes at least. Thank you very much.